All right, good evening. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us in the uh, Bible class again. Thank you for coming, everyone who's in the classroom right now and those who are listening. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that uh, you open up their spiritual ears, O oh God, so that they can hear you loud and clear. Oh Lord, I pray as well that um, you, will, you will also open up their spiritual hearts, O oh God, so that every word, O oh God, that will be taught, they will be able to discern. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, put words in my mouth, O oh God, so that, Lord, every word that, that are taught today, O oh God, will come from you. It will not come from me, because, Lord, you are the one who will direct my path in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, today's lesson is going to be very straightforward. It's going to be importance of strong friendship. Amen? And uh, beware of uh, divisional spirit. I call it divisional spirit. Uh, there, are, there is actually great importance in, uh, in a strong friendship. But every time when you want to write a, a, a teaching of this nature, sometimes, you know, <clears throat> enemies will come and just try to stir you up and try to... to to, uh, to move you in a different uh, direction, in a different way. But uh, it is so important that uh, if every one of us uh, and the members of the church, they are able to uh, come together as close friends, trusting uh, each other, even though uh, everybody will have their own uh, character, their own, uh, uh, their own uh, thoughts, their own uh, uh, attitude. But the main focus here is Whatever it is, the main focus, stay close to God and focus on the Lord. Because the, the days are near and the enemies will just come in different direction and try to uh, kick you off your path. All right. For example, if you are just standing by the rail track all right, or just uh, on, on the path uh, just beside the rail track, when the train passes by, it's really, really fast. You, know, you can feel the strong gush of the wind. And uh, if you're not well balanced, sometimes you feel that, you know, it's, it's, it's just swaying you a little bit in, in terms of your posture. So many times, even uh, when, the, when you are in the railway station, when the train passes by, especially in the high-speed uh, terminal, people have, they have a yellow line, a line that is, you know, will tell you that this is the line that you should not move beyond the line because that's going to be a, a, a position that you risk yourself. But as uh, fellowship members of the church, it's, it's very important that you know, we, we learn to understand each other in, in a very close manner and we must be able to discern certain things that when there are certain sparks that sparks out, uh, we must always discern uh, these sparks that sparks out is due to what? So it is very important that uh, every one of us uh, if you are able to stay together strong as a, as a fellowship, fellowship church and uh, close friends, we become very united in terms of uh, church building. We are very united in terms of uh, evangelism. We are very united in solving matters in the church because uh, spiritual growth, it's something that, you know, the devil is not afraid that, you know, you, you come to the church. The devil is never afraid you come to church. You can come to church every day and so the devil is not afraid of you. And even if you sit down in the church, uh, you lift up your hands, you sing songs, and then you open your Bible, the devil is never afraid of you. The devil is only afraid of you when you begin to work in, in the direction of God and the presence of God is with you and you have the word of God that is in your hand and that's the sword of the Spirit. Because in the name of Jesus, you'll be able to cast out demons. In the name of Jesus, and you see lay hands, sickness can be healed as well so the devil knows very well that the word of god is a powerful powerful tool and the faith that you have in jesus christ is an extremely powerful tool but uh, the uh, the the satan will come about uh, in a deceiving spirit uh, to rule and to divide and you can you can you can find that uh, in uh, in the book of uh, in the book of kings in the book of kings the uh, first kings chapter 18 you can see that the uh, uh, Jezebel is one of the uh, very uh, uh, well uh, considered as well known uh, uh, 
Jezebelic spirit, they call it, uh, that will uh, sort of uh, steer you off from uh, your, your actual path. And uh, you can read that in the book of uh, uh, 1 Kings uh, chapter 18. Uh, Jezebel took the throne with King Ahab. And there was a time where Israel was in a ter political turmoil. And she worshipped idols. She reintroduced idols to Israel. And uh, you can read that in the book of Kings as well. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 4. She actually slaughtered the, the Lord's prophet. And she also wrongfully killed a man to take possession of his vineyard. And Jezebel at the same time threatened as well to kill prophet Elijah. All right. And you know that uh, Elijah was running for his life. And uh, he murdered anyone who actually protested against her because she wants to introduce Baal worship into the kingdom. So what's the difference in uh, Jesus, this uh, divisional uh, spirit, the uh, Jezebelic spirit? Anytime when I look at certain situation that like, you know, like, you know, like Moses, when he was in the, in the, in the desert, he saw a, a burning bush. The bush that burns, normally, after some time, it fizzles up. The bush that burns, it will fizzle up. It has been frequent, so it's a sparks here, sparks there, then, the, you know, there's suddenly there's some uh, a bush that's on fire, but it will fizzle out. But when the, 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 the bush burns, in the, in the case of Moses when he was in, in the desert, the, bushes that, the bush that burns never fizzles out. Keep burning, keep burning, keep burning. As uh, Moses draw nearer and nearer and nearer, it's still burning, burning. But he was, so, he was wondering, how can the bush fire doesn't fizzle out? And he heard a voice that God spoke to him. He said, Moses, you're on, on holy ground. Huh? You have to take out your sandals. In other words, when the presence of God comes upon you, it's something that you really have to figure out why God's presence is upon you and God wants to speak to you. And the burning bush doesn't burn out. The same situation of a spark. If, so if you see a situation uh, in a church, in a fellowship, on outside, or in a family, anywhere it happens, if the spark that sparks continue and burn uh, like a burning bush, uh, but this, this is not a, this is a fake burning bush, uh, but this kind of sparks, it's just sparks upon sparks eh, and keep going. Eh. But where it comes from, where is the root? We might look at it, where is the root? If the root is a simplicity root, eh, then again we must think, why it happens? Why it happens? Because Jezebelic spirit will come about eh, without you realizing one. Jezebelic spirit can come about even to a woman or somebody eh, without her actually realizing it. Eh. But she will just continue to bulldoze her way through, continue to uh, push her way through. And finally, as far as it's concerned, the word spoken can be very uh, uh, considered as deceptive, but can be considered as very polite and diplomatic. So if somebody speaks a word that's very diplomatic, very, very diplomatic, you feel that it's so diplomatic, but because of the diplomacy that was spoken and politeness that was spoken, uh, you can see that this case is, is punching the way through. So it's like tunneling a tunnel, you know. Uh, tunnel. When you say, hey, don't, 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 don't tunnel this tunnel with this, with this huge machinery. Uh, but you say, it's okay, I understand. I understand that. Pastor, I understand. Sister, I understand. Brothers, I understand. But you keep on doing it. For example, you go to somebody's house, I said, you know. I was asking somebody today, I said, you know. If, if, let's say, for example, you have a student in your class, you have a student in your class, and then you tell your student, he says, uh, okay, this is going to be uh, practical, uh, this wiring is going to wire like this, you know, it's going to wire like this, you know, this is the way to wire it, so that the motor will drive and it will work. Uh, this is the way. And then you notice that this person uh, doing the wiring, uh, he purposely or intentionally do it otherwise. And then the lecturer will ask, ask, ask him, Hey, I told you to do it this way. This is the correct way. Then this student will say, I understand. Lecturer, I understand. Uh, but you don't understand what I'm doing. Uh, I so sh this person will continue doing uh, the red wire, yellow wire, green wire. Then the lecturer, no, this is not the way to do it. Then the same thing again, the student will tell you, uh, Sister Agnes is quite, quite familiar in the school. Uh, uh, no, teacher, this is... I understand what you're do, what you're saying, but 
the person will pursue to do their own way. I believe in the classroom is the same also. Sometimes you tell the, the student, as far as I remember when I was in high school, in the school, the teacher said, you know, at the maths you must do this way, this is the formula you must do. And then the student uh, continue to do their own way. Uh, no, 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 I understand, teacher understand, but they continue to do their own formula. But finally the answer come out also wrong. It happens. Why? Uh, they want to push their way through. This is diplomatic ego. I understand. I know, but you ask me to paint the wall white. Yes, I know I'm painting, but today I think red color looks nicer. You don't understand. Red color looks very nice on your wall. Your partition looks white. Please plain white. Oh, red is good. So this is the diplomatic kind of... Uh, 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 but at the end of the day, uh, uh, don't know who will have a heart attack. <laughs> So, so, so we just have to be very watchful uh, of this kind of diplomatic kind. So Jezebel will go about like that, you know. Oh, this is the way, this is the way. So that's how he influenced the Ahab as well, King Ahab. So we, it's a form of uh, uh, what call that manipulation. Uh, uh, manipulation without the person knowing something. Because it's just part of, a, you know, when they are young, it's part of naughtiness and cheekiness, we call that. When you're young, uh, but when you're older, you must, you must come to a position. Uh, the Bible says we must come to a position uh, of uh, obedience. Let me share with you. Uh, let me share with you this. Uh, you read that this is an extremely, extremely very good story about, uh, about Jonathan uh, and King David. Extremely, extremely good, good story. David, when he was very young, he met up with Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan is the son of uh, King Saul. The Bible says here in the first Samuel here, chapter 20, verse 41, 42 is here. As soon as the boy was gone, uh, David came out from where he had been hiding near the stone pile. Then David bowed three times to Jonathan with his face to the ground. Both of them were in tears as they embraced and, uh, each other and said goodbye, especially David. Why? Uh, because King Saul wanted to kill David. And Jonathan, being the son of King Saul, he knew the plan that his father is going to kill his best friend David. And he told David, run away. My father is going to kill you. And the father said, you know, having dinner, where is David? Huh? Oh, he's not around. Next day, where is David? Not around. Then he told Jonathan, why is it that David is not around? Then Jonathan said, because you are going to kill him. So he ran off. Now, so when, uh, when he ran off, you see here, both of them are so intimate in their friendship. At last, Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for we have sworn loyalty, loyalty to each other in the Lord's name. The Lord is the witness of the bond between us and our children. Then David left and Jonathan returned to the town. So for, John, for, for David to run away, Jonathan had to give a special signal. Special signal. Now uh, you hide, uh, hide, in the, hide, hide somewhere first. Hide near the stone pile yeah, in this case. And then he asked the boy, you shoot the arrow, shoot the arrow, uh, shoot the arrow. After shooting the arrow sometime, then three times here, in this case, he shot the arrow, all right? And he says three times, then he shot the arrow, shot, shot the arrow, and then later on, uh, he told the boy, you pick up all these, these, bow, these arrows, and then you just, you, you go back somewhere, go back somewhere first, like, you just go off. And then from there, the signal was, when the boy pick up the, uh, the arrows and then leave, David came out. David came out and met up with Jonathan. And Jonathan been, and, and David, so good friend. Uh, the Bible says here, because Jonathan told David, you must go. What they did, he was so sad his friend had to leave her. Uh, he embraced his friend. He said goodbye. Then there were tears. So sad he had to tell his friend. And, but when Jonathan left, he said, as, as Jonathan said to David, go in peace for we have sworn loyalty, loyalty to each other in the Lord's name. They were so loyal that means you go, but I'm still your friend. Huh? The decision is I'm still your friend. 
The Lord is the witness of a bond between us and our children forever. So David left, Jonathan returned to the town. So in our case here, see, when, when, we, when we have a kind of friendship, I remember during my days, those days before I was born again, I have a lot of friends, honestly. A lot, a lot of friends. My handphone, a lot of friends. Every time before a school holiday, people will call me, Eddie. Many of them will call me, Jack, please book for me a hotel a room. Please book for me. Where you are going, I am going. Where you are going, I am going. Where your family is going, my family also will go. I say, hey, so many cars coming. I say, don't so many cars. You know, maybe eight family enough. Don't so many family. Too many family, 12 family. How am I going to take care of so many family? But don't worry, la, you know, you just book la, my family, this family. So all, all these are my friends. That was before I was born again. But when things were really going down, when things are not so good, the important thing is, where are your friends? I can remember. I can remember very well who are my friends. So I told myself one thing, my handphone, all my news. When during the time when I'm in my valley uh, and trenches and the cave, uh, who will call me? The person who call me uh, will be my friend. Nobody call. Sad, huh? Nobody call. Huh? So I call somebody. Huh? I call somebody. Uh. Those days when I high and mighty, uh, wow. Chuali bo mun day one people. Why well, you ask for how many thousand people was gonna give you? Did they ask you also give? But when you have problem, uh, you ask, uh, hey, can you loan me two thousand ringgit uh, for two weeks or three weeks a maximum? Uh, uh, can ah uh, ah? Uh, I think so uh, I see how I let you know. Ah uh, ah. Uh, okay, finally he said, okay, can after two days uh, Every day call you five times a day. Hey, where the two thousand ringgit I loan to you? Uh, you know, my mother need it, my who need it, they go, wow, they need to go hospital, they this. Wow. How come all the story came out already? Huh? Yes. So we're talking about importance of strong friendship, very strong friendship. The strong friendship is in the family of Christ. Yes. I don't deny that. I've seen it uh, over and over. Even in the book of uh, Paul told Timothy, in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, he says what? Whatever you do, very important, you take care of your family versus your household first. Second, you take care of your relative. Biblical? Yes, biblical. Of course. In this case, like Jonathan and uh, uh, David, uh, uh, they were considered as sworn loyalty brothers. That's how close they are. Uh, why? It's because they believe friendship, uh, strong friendship is a priority. And the day will come, sometimes, you know, you, we look at the situation uh, when people, for example, uh, for example, uh, you know, for example, they go to the Lord, all right, asleep. Then they find, suddenly they find, uh, hey, who to call? Uh? No church, no pastor, no friends, no nothing. Every, suddenly they find, find themselves in stranded, the family stranded. Why? Because last time they say, I don't want to go, I don't want to go to this church, I don't want to go to that fellowship, I don't want to mix with this world. I, me, myself. So everything is going to be in themselves. So when the time goes on, they said, I, I believe a strong friendship is such, such, such. It's really, really important. If you ask, if you ask me, uh, uh, it's very true. You can, you, you can, you can have a lot of friends. I, I, let me share with you this. Uh, let me share with you this first. You, you can see, look at this. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. You know, certain things that uh, this Bible class uh, is also not, it's not, it's not by chance. Uh. Before anything happened, uh, many days ago, I picked this, I was looking, but, but I know the devil is coming to knock you off uh, of a Bible class. So that when you don't, you don't, you, you are not off from uh, teaching a class, uh, it's because uh, you're so tired, you know, you're so drained off, you know. You know it's, it's the same, you know, when you're running a church, you know, I begin to ask some, there are many people who ask themselves as well, you run a church, don't you feel tired? You run a church, should you be there? Should you take sabbatical leave? Should you relieve yourself from the church? Should you stay away from the church? Should you resign from the church? Should you continue or not? Should it be such? Why should you be in this position? 
Why should you, why should you go through such a, a, you know, trials and challenges and you know ups and downs? And so, is it necessary? So it depends how you how you really look at the race and run. You know, people are saying if you run a ministry, yeah, can you sustain yourself in a ministry for fifteen years on stop? That's one of the criteria if you want to be, have, even have a doctorate. 15 years of non-stop, I'm talking about huh? non-stop ministry. Huh? You don't say, I, I run a ministry for 5 years, 7 years, and then I, I stop for 3 years, 5 years. And then I come back again. Uh, then after that, I stop a while, then I come back again. You say, how many years have you been ministry? Oh, I've been ministry for 25 years. But actually, you stop, you come back, stop, you come back. I'm not saying it's no good to stop and come back. But I'm saying that... Uh, Paul said, when you run a race, uh, fight a good fight. It is difficult, but the reward is for the glory of God. Let's have a look at this. Uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 18, verse 24 it says here. A person of too many friends comes to your room, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. All right, this is the American uh, standard version. And the other version, the NIV version says, this, a person of too many friends comes to your room, but there is a friend who sticks close. Oh, that is a, that's the uh, 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 what you call that American uh, standard uh, Bible. The other one is one who has uh, unreliable friends uh, soon comes to your room. But there is a friend who sticks closer than the brother. The other one says, a man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than the brother. True, true also. Let me explain to you. You know, King Solomon saying, King Solomon, uh, King Solomon wrote the most of the book in, in the book of Proverbs. King Solomon said this, uh, if you have uh, many friends, it's good. If you have many friends, it's good. But not everyone is your friend. Uh. Uh, not everyone is your friend. You, have, you can have many, many friends, but not everyone is your friend. If everyone is your friend, uh, then there is something wrong with you. Definitely something wrong with you. Because why? It is not possible uh, for all your friends to be perfect. One. So King Solomon is saying, so you can have many friends, but when you have too many friends, you will come to the room also. Because you also will follow all those Boani Ho and uh, not so good also you follow. Uh, because all your friends. Ma, uh, but it also says here that Normally, the people who have many, many friends and the people who want to stick to you as your friend, number one is, if you are wealthy, uh, sure many people stick to you. Am I right? Uh, they multi-millionaire. Many people stick to you or not? Sure, well, many people stick to you. On, uh, definitely. So people stick to you uh, for what? Number one, Sure got benefit, la. you multi-millionaire. Ma. <laughs> you sure got a lot of project. What? So people will stick to you. Yeah. But another type of people eh, who stick to you eh, is because why, you know? They want to use your time. Yes? You're so friendly. You're so good. You're so obliging. Eh? They want to use your time. So when they have time, eh, they want to use your time. When they have no time, eh, you have time also, they have no time for you. So they want to use your time. But even you have no time also, uh, you will allocate time. There will be people like that who want to make use of your time and your obligation. But there are people as well who will make use not only of your time, make use of what you have, you know, something that will benefit them. Yes? Something that will benefit them. For example, okay, for example, I say, um, Actually, my house, for example, for example, I stay in, for example, this person says, I stay in an apartment. I have a piano in the apartment, but my house is a little bit too many things in it. So I said, I want to give this piano away. For example, I want to give it away. So I said, ah, maybe you can tumpang your house. Maybe you can put your house, your house bigger, I can put your house. So the, the piano moved to your house, right? So the piano moved to your house now. Then, for my convenience, uh, for my convenience, uh, every time I want to play, I go to your house and play piano. 
10 o'clock also I can go play at night. 11 o'clock also I can go play at night. So, benefit who? Many friends, bro. So the wise thing Solomon is saying here, the wise thing Solomon is saying here is, uh, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. Okay, a person have too many friends also will come to ruin. Why? Uh, say. Because if you have too many friends, uh, you will tend sometimes to hang out with these people. So when you hang out with these people, uh, everybody also you hang out. It is not a good choice. Solomon is saying it's not a good choice. But now you can see uh, when there is a political campaign going on. Uh, uh, who are your friends? The person who fund you more, that is your friend. Uh. <laughs> right? So you are this political party. The, those person, uh, those companies, those what can fund you a lot. Uh, wow, I'll give you a lot of funding. Uh. Those are your friends. Uh. Uh, so Solomon is saying that, you know, when you have close friends, stick to your close, genuine close friends. Uh, Thick and thin also you stick to them. Huh? Why I say that? Let's have a look. He who loves a purity of heart and has grace on his lips, the king will be his friend. I say this, a good action may not be a, um, be may not uh, be a, be necessary a, 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 may not be a necessary action. A good action may not be a necessary action. I have a good action. But it may not be necessary. Why I say that? For example, you know there was a story of somebody. He says uh, he told his friend. His friend came and stayed with him. You know, for for the uh, like a holiday weekend. Uh, you know, that, but this this friend of his, a very close friend, he says, um, this weekend I really need to go out and I need to go somewhere and do something. Like no, so I won't be back for the weekend. You know, but uh, I'm really in a rush. Uh, so they had some breakfast and some food. You know, and then the food were plates and all those. Put in the basin. Uh, yeah. So he told his friend, remember, uh, uh, you just tidy up all this place for me. Uh. So he left, he went off. But he came back after two days after the weekend. Uh. He looked at his house. Uh. Wow, why my house like that? Uh? How come? Uh? How come uh, different? Then his friend told him, I decided uh, this TV here, uh, move here better. This position you see there, more comfortable. And then the sofa, he directed the sofa also. Change position. Everything he changed. There's the higher. Oh, this is my house. I asked him to look after the house for two days so we can change everything. And then he went to the basin there. He looked at the, the plates and all those spoons and all those. It was untouched. Huh? So he said, Hey, I've done a good thing for you. A good action may not necessarily be a necessary action. It's not. It's, it's nothing good. So sometimes a necessary thing may not be a good action. So he did. He thought it was necessary to change the position so far, position of the TV, but it's not a good action. So in our life as well, you know, sometimes we think you know it is. It's certain things are necessary, but let's have a. Uh, Wisdom, huh? your heart must be pure enough to do the right things at the right time. Amen. Let's have a look at this. Huh? This is also a very good story. You have time, go back and read First Samuel chapter 9. Beautiful, beautiful story about friendship. Very beautiful about friendship. i just give you a glimpse of what's happening now. Huh? Saul was the one who want to, wanted to murder, to kill David. In short, later on, when uh, Saul died, it's only a natural situation those days that uh, the entire family would be wiped off. Right? Because otherwise, there would be some uh, family members that may, in time to come, take revenge upon David. And King David then asked him, this him here, it's the servant. He said here, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Ziba is a servant, replied, yes, 
one of Jonathan's son is still alive. Jonathan and David, they are like brothers and very close. Huh? But Jonathan died already. Now Jonathan has a son. One of his sons is still alive. But this son is crippled in his leg. And he cannot walk uh, even to ask David, uh, King David, for forgiveness. You know, you know. He just cannot do anything. And then uh, King David asked, Where is this person? He says, Ziba told, uh, told King David, In the place called Lodaba. And then, to cut the story short, King David told Ziba, you bring him, you bring this person. His name is Mephibosheth. So he brought Mephibosheth, and Mephibosheth being a crippled son of Jonathan, he knew that when he meet up with David, uh, he sure Matthew. John, he believed that David would kill him because that was the kind of scenario. Any family members there, uh, they were killed. So now, Mephibosheth went there thinking that when he meet up with David, he will be killed. But instead, uh, when Mephibosheth went there and met up with King David, he bowed down. But the king uh, did not, King David did not kill Matthew Boshan. Why? Because uh, he says, me and your father, we are covenant brothers. What belongs to Matthew Boshan, to Jonathan, Jonathan's father is all belongs to you. Everything uh, David returned back to a crippled man and he invited Mephish Boshat to sit on his table, king's table, every day to dine. Amen. So David remembered his covenant with Jonathan. David showed kindness to fulfill everything that is necessary, even to a crippled son of Jonathan, because Jonathan and him, they are close friends. So when you are close friends with your sisters and all those, uh, always treasure something, even beyond uh, what you are now. Uh, even beyond what you are now, even to your children's children, because God have a plan uh, when they what put you together. Uh, so don't look at the, the situation when there is a, a division of spirit that comes and try to steal something and cause misunderstanding and create a, a, a you know a fire, a sparks and all those. Uh, don't look at all those fires and sparks. Look at a situation of this nature. And Matthew Boshet stayed in a place uh, called uh, Low the Bar, also very charming, you know. Also very difficult. The low the bar here means a barren land, no pasture one, tan bocha one. Very difficult, very difficult. Uh, so we don't live in the place called low the bar. Land. We live in the place called Bethel, house of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> So you look at the situation of this nature. All of us actually, uh, we are actually like a Matthew Boshet as well. Why I say that? Matthew Boshet, he was helpless. Matthew Boshet, he was crippled. Matthew Boshet, he could not come to God by himself and Ivan, you know, do what is necessary and I even ask the king in this case for forgiveness and, and, and grace from King David. He just couldn't move. But we were like Matthew Boshet. But when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, we come to God because we are hopeless. We come to God because we are helpless. 
we come to God because I was crippled. You know, years ago, uh, when I just beginning to know the Lord, uh, and then I remember one of my brother came to the house. So I was sitting down there, I was singing. Sometimes when you sing, you're very clever to cry. Uh. I don't know whether you realize or not. <laughs> so, uh, I remember I was singing Majesty, you know. Majesty, Majesty. Wow, my tears just speaking, streaming, streaming. Uh. And then the, the, the words was like, uh, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was like empty or something like that. The words, right? Uh, 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 like, you know, uh, I was... Uh, the grace of God came, you know, even though, you know, I was empty-handed, uh, uh, the grace of God came. So when I was just worshipping and singing, you know, I was just telling myself, you know, we are actually helpless, hopeless, uh, so many lessless, uh, yes. but yet God receives us. Uh, Jesus still receives us. So when I look at it, of course it's so difficult at times to see. Say give thanks. Huh? Give thanks is a very easy word to say, but very difficult to do. Very difficult to do. At times, the enemy will try to try to knock you, knock you, knock you, until you cannot sleep. Yes. Yesterday, also, I couldn't sleep. Until 3 a.m., I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep at all. I said, yeah. really, this one, this Jezebelic spirit, uh, very strong. You know? Then I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I rebuke in the name of Jesus, Jezebelic spirit. Get out of my thoughts, get out of my life. Cover me with the blood of Jesus. It's also hard to pray, you know. Uh, because the heart uh, tussling and the mind uh, also tussling. Also very hard to pray. But we still have to find strength to pray. The moment when we pray uh, and rebuke the Jezebelic spirit, cover me with the blood of Jesus Christ, five minutes or so I sleep in it. Otherwise, very difficult. So in our life, sometimes it's also the same. Uh, all right, let's have a look at this. The Bible says here, I'm a companion of all who fear you and those and of those who keep your precepts. When the Siamese in the book of Psalms 119 verse 63. Yeah? Psalms 119 verse 63. When the when the Siamese, Siamese wrote this, he says here, I'm a companion of all who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. Actually, the Samis was actually looking at uh, in the world, uh, in the world, uh, there are so many wickedness. True, no? In the world, there are a lot of, also a lot of sadness. Lah. In the world, also a lot of uh, discouragement, honestly, a lot of discouragement. And this kind of discouragement and this kind of uh, uh, sadness and this kind of tussles and all those it's just like you know the psalmist was thinking, saying like you know it's just like uh, you tie a rope around you uh, you can move up uh, cannot move now you tie a rope around you, rope around you you cannot move tired if you tie your hand your hands cannot move like, tie your leg your legs cannot move both legs and legs and hands are going to be worse you know but the psalmist was still saying that in spite of they been hike around uh, by these ropes uh, of uh, surrounding them of uh, difficulty, challenges and doubts and uh, worries and all this you know, dissension and, uh, and chaotic situation in the world. Uh, but yet they are committed to keep the word of God. Amen. So in our life also, you know, when things around us are like that, we must be committed to keep the Lord's word and his commands. What, is, what, what, what are the Lord's words and, and God's command? Number one is, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience. Everything we look at it, it must be obedience. So when uh, the psalmist look at it, because of this, obedience and the word of God, they begin to look at the foundation that they must have with the Lord. And the first foundation they look at it is, I am a companion uh, of my fellow brothers uh, 
who fear you. And these are the children of God. That's my companion. Otherwise, your companion companion with all the world people. <laughs> so God is advising us, being Christians, uh, our foundation, uh, our foundation is a relationship with God. And our relationship with God, if we if we have a problem, for example, uh, if I have a problem, for example, I talk to God though, but the first thing I run to uh, is also a man of God. A companion of those who fear you. Why? Because when I talk to them, uh, I will have godly counsel. Yes. Amen. Yes. If you have you have you are hurt, then you are you're angry, you are you're disappointed, then you run to the worldly people, then the worldly people will tell you, Yeah, I think you better quarrel with him, fight with him, uh, don't go and see him, <laughs> don't have tea with him, don't have lunch, don't see him forever or something, you know. That is a really thought, but the, the first thought here is to uh, have uh, companionship. Uh, all right, let's have a look. Uh. Uh, many will seek the favor of generous person, and every person is a friend to him who gives gifts. Yeah, very true. Huh? Yeah. If you are a generous person, in other words, you uh, you are considered as sometimes people look at you. Uh, yeah, you are a wealthy person. Uh, uh. So rich people have many friends. That's true. Uh, if you are a multi-millionaire in, uh, in, in, in the church or in, in some of the organization and so forth, uh, you just say, oh yeah, you are very uh, sort of uh, a well-known uh, influencer. So you just call for uh, a gathering. Uh, uh, come, wow, buffet, this, but, and then your, 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 your number of cars in your house. Of course, nah, you, know, you know, these are the first draws, nah, I would say. Uh, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not saying that, I'm not advocating that these, no, these are bad things, all right, eh? don't get me wrong. Eh? But rich people, generally, they have many friends, all right? But remember, the Bible speaks as well, eh? but those friends who remain faithful, eh? even when you are in your adversity, eh? adversity means your difficult time, eh? these are your friends. Eh? The Bible t teaches us as well, eh? The Bible teaches us as well that uh, he says here, all right. Just a little bit off first for a while. Huh? The Bible teaches us as well. Huh? Your closest friend huh, will be found huh, when you are in your adversity. Am I right? Huh? When you are in your worst situation, huh, huh, your closest friend will, will come up from the water. Huh? Like head, uh, swimming, <laughs> swimming. The blood will come up. Breathe, uh, take the snorkel out, <laughs> the goggles. Where, uh, where are you? Uh, uh, those fellas who are not your closest friend, uh, when you have a problem, the blood, they will wear the goggle, gear, uh, <laughs> they will submerge and scuba dive, and then they will swim very far away. <laughs> when they come out, uh, another island already. Then you ask, hey, where's this person? Uh? So long I never see him. Don't know where he went already. Because why? He knows that when you are in trouble, sure you need help. What kind of help? So people tend to move away sometimes. So when you want to find, see your friends, when you are in an adversity, uh, adverse situation, that's where your friends will be. All right. The other one here is when you are among your close friends, uh, speak the truth. Faithful are the wounds of a friend who corrects out of love and concern. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful because they serve his hidden agenda. i just get to give you a short uh, synopsis of this. Uh. Judas. Huh? When Judas uh, met up, uh, you know, wanted to betray uh, Jesus Christ. Uh. And Judas told uh, the soldiers that's about to arrest him. All right. In the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 26, verse 48 and 49, the traitor Judas had given them pre-arranged signal and said, you know, when I, when I go there, I'm going to give you a sign that this is Jesus. Give a sign, huh? this is Jesus. And uh, the next verse says, 
when I go there, I give you a sign that this is Jesus. The next verse says, when I go and approach this man, I'm going to kiss him, I'm going to embrace him and kiss him on the cheek, and you arrest him. So kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Huh? In other words, sometimes the, the, your, your friends, uh, so-called friends, they are your actual, actual enemy, but they will come with, you know, different kind of way of handling you. Uh, but if you are faithful to a friend, even though sometimes the thing will hurt him or hurt her for a while or whatever it is, be truthful. Uh. Don't that actually not nice also, is it nice? This is diplomatic, but in the kingdom of God, uh, for example, uh, for example, for example, only, uh, okay, you cook this food, uh, for example. But I eat, uh, very salty. Uh. Another person also say very salty. The other person also say very salty. And then when, then when the person who cook, cook the food and uh, ask you, how it tastes, uh, oh, very nice, very tasty, uh, I want to have some more. Then she scoop some more for you, but actually you take that, then, then you walk, walk to the corner, then maybe you pour it away. And then after, eh, I, I finished, finish, I finished already. So that's not been very truthful. Uh. Uh, what I'm saying here, yeah, uh, be truthful. Uh. Uh, be truthful in the things that we do. Yeah. So, uh, same thing like Apostle Paul, when he was uh, in the ministry, doing the deeds of God, and uh, work, walking with God, Paul served the people, Paul relate to the people, but whatever it is, Paul still continued to tell the people, to repent. Uh, Paul did not say, Nehemiah, you have a mistake, Nehemiah. Continue, Nehemiah. Okay, la, okay. Yes. But repent. Yes. Grow. Yes. And change. Uh, metanoa. Change your mind. Move in a different direction. Move to a different destiny that God wants you to be. And continue to show the love of Christ yes. in you. Yes. Even though you need to speak the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Right, we have two more slides here, then we'll close. All right. The Bible says here, be open. When you are close to friends, be open. Jesus look at us and says, you know, you no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I call you friends for all the things that I heard from my father, I made known to you. Even though we are the servant of the Lord, the definition here of being servant of the Lord is because God gives, gives us an assignment to do. So we have a task to fulfill. So when you have a task to fulfill, we are called a servant. All right. But the Lord looks as, at us as well, uh, that we are also his friend. Why I say that? Uh, if you have a friend, you will confide to a friend. You will tell the friend you know, certain things, certain things, but you will not give a task to a friend you know uh, you will confide to a friend these are things oh next week uh i'm um, i'm going to for example i'm going to australia i'm going for uh, 10 days or two weeks then i'm coming back you know but then you will talk, talk to a friend you confide to a friend then you tell a friend oh i'm meeting who i'm meeting my son my daughter whoever you know you don't talk to a servant that way is it? you talk to a friend that way so jesus in this case here yeah, uh, Jesus said this, No longer do I call you servant, but for a servant does not understand what his master is doing. But I call you friends, because everything I've learned from my father, Jesus learned from the father, he made known to you. And then he said this, You did not choose me. I chose you. John chapter 15 verse 16, he says here, You did not choose me. I did not choose God. If you ask me, yes, I did not choose God. I don't know God. Right. Keith, huh? But God chose us. God chose you and me. And then he says here, huh? but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit and fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the, the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Who give it to you? The Father will give it to you in the name of Jesus. God is the one who chooses. Amen. Uh, 
So when you are your close friends, your close sisters, close brothers, close family members, close relatives, always remember it's God who chose you to be close with them. Treasure your close friendship. Treasure it. Uh, whatever it is, treasure it. So do not allow the enemy to come and just very easily uh, just blow, blow on you. <laughs> Break up. No, don't be so easy. Huh? All right. Okay, the last one here is a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Very, very true. Huh? When you have a friend, huh? when you have no problem, huh? they are always your friend. No? That's what he's saying here. He will always be your friend. But the the theologian also said this, you know. The greater the real, that means the greater you are in the <laughs> your leg is inside the uh, the pit, huh? huh? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the greater your legs are inside the pit, uh, you want to come out so difficult, uh, you know, like Joseph, like that in the pit, uh, so difficult. Uh. The greater the realm, the closer he clings. Your friend will cling to you. So if you are going through a very difficult situation uh, and your friend is your close friend, uh, the closer I will hold on to you because I want to see you cross this boundary. The more I want to help you so that you will be able to break through. That is your friend. These are your close friends. So let us be uh, close. Uh, in, in, in this case, uh, Proverbs says, is a brother is born for adversity. A brother here includes uh, sisters as well. Uh, you know, uh, sisters as well. So be ready to help our friends when they need our help. And not just when it is convenient for us. When they need our help, go. But sometimes, you know, but every, but I would say uh, that in usual situation, uh, when somebody needs your help, uh, it is not usually a convenient time. <laughs> sometimes it may not be a convenient time. But yet, if there is a need, just go. Uh. For example, uh, if somebody calls you up at 3 a.m. in the morning, for example, uh, really there's a need, uh, go. Uh. You can't say uh, that, you know, 3 o'clock. Somebody told me some time ago, he says, Jack, uh, my phone is always, uh, he says this, my phone is always uh, 24 hours. I said, very good. Anytime you call, uh, I'm at 24 hours ready for ministry. Very good. So there's one day I wanted to call. Huh? I look at my watch. 4.30. So difficult. When is going to come at 5 o'clock? 4.31. 4.33. 4.35. Slowly as the time passes. But the time passes so slow, huh? When you need them, you call them. So we passed by at 5 o'clock, 5.05, I called. But there was no response. Maybe the phone was battery dry, whatever, it doesn't matter. It may happen again, you know. Huh? But at least you could hear it, you know. Hey, you think I wake up so early to listen to your call? Huh? <laughs> so... So when we are in ministry, we must be ready. When we call Jesus, Jesus ready is ready, right? When we call Jesus, is Jesus ready? Jesus is always ready for us. Uh, when we call the Lord, we expect the Lord to be 24 hours on standby. We call the Lord every minute also He wants us to stand by. Uh, we know the Holy Spirit is our paracletos. He walks parallel with us hand in hand. Where you go, He will walk hand in hand with you. Uh. So in short, I'm saying that, you know, as close friends, be ready for each other. Uh, because we never know when it will be where there is a 
an emergency call. Yeah. Yeah. If the Lord comes back, when the Lord comes back during the last days, of course, I, if I'm, you know, before going, I will be thinking, oh, my close friend, there must be raptured in Rome. <laughs> Quickly raptured. I don't want to see you around. Right. So it's important uh, to make ourselves available. Uh, right. Amen. 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 Shall we close? Uh? Father, we thank you. We praise you, God, that uh, help us to stay close as friends. Uh, yeah. Help us, oh God, to stay close as a true friend, close friend, someone who is so privileged to have not only the close friend by our side, we are so privileged to have a close friend who are able to help us in times of our need and also close friends where we are able to help them in their needs. Um, that includes the sisters and the brothers. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, I pray, O oh Father, let us be here. Uh, let us walk in your, your grace, your mercy, your compassion that uh, looking upon you every time that you are the author and finisher of our faith. Our faith sometimes, oh God, may be uh, may go high tide, low tide at times. Eh? But God, you've been the author mm -hmm. and the finisher of our faith. You will always help us and strengthen us. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, help us in the areas that we are weak so that we will be strengthened. Help us in the areas, O oh God, that you want us to change so that we will change in accordance to your will. Help us, O oh God, so that, Lord, we will always walk in accordance to your will and your likeness, O oh Father. Lord, we know at times it is difficult, but God, we believe with you all things are possible. All of us, O oh God, we are work in progress, but Lord, we know that the day will come when we will finally die ourselves and gain in Christ in eternity with you. When the day we are asleep, O oh God, Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to bring souls unto your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.